we got. Thank you. Yeah. Hey guys, Hello. awesome to be on the main stage today. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be talking about how to make your food go viral. And just a quick intro, I'm Roxy and this is my partner Ben. Um, and together we run a channel called So Vegan and we have over 1.3 million followers across our channels. And it all kind of started about four years ago now when as newly turned vegans we kind of turned to each other and said, how can we share our newfound passion with vegan food with as many people as possible? And we kind of dawned on us that the best way to do this was to create video content. So that's what we did. And uh, at the start, it was a hobby. It was kind of on the side every evening and weekends. We'd develop the recipes, edit them, film them. And then gradually over the years, we kind of found our mission, what we really stand for, and our identity. And our mission is to make it easy for everyone to eat more plants so that people and planet can thrive. And we did this in a few ways. So by keeping the ingredients down with our recipes, by keeping the methods short, by ensuring the ingredients are really easy and accessible, so you can find them in a supermarket. And kind of all of this thinking led to us to create our first book, which was So Vegan in Five, which was a five ingredient cookbook. And all the recipes are super simple, they just need five ingredients. And we gained the support of Paul McCartney and Chris Martin from Coldplay for the book, which was awesome. But that is enough about So Vegan. We're here to kind of really drill down into content creation and find out what really makes a video go viral. Yes, exactly. And I think the first thing to do is to tackle, I guess, the elephant in the room, which is like, what do we mean by the word viral? I think the reason why we want to do this is because it's a word that was used a lot in the past and isn't maybe used as much uh, at the moment. And I think that's because maybe to a certain extent it's almost become a little bit redundant. So for the purpose of this, seeing as the talk is called How to Make Your Food Go Viral, we want to kind of unpack this a little bit and just to talk about what we mean by viral. So I think if you look at 2015, Definitely you think of probably <laughs> sure. the most viral thing of all time. And if you fast forward, I think the way we've used the internet has changed a lot, right? The way we interact with content has changed. And I think the way we see it is what's happening is communities have formed where things are still technically going viral, but they're not necessarily having the same impact that they did in 2000, 2015. So what we want to talk about is effectively what we call like shareability. So it means what actually convinces somebody to share a piece of content within their community. And what we think, and what we know really, is there are four reasons why somebody might want to engage with a piece of content or why they might want to share it. And you might be looking at it thinking, what on earth are these four things? Well, so I used to work at BuzzFeed in the UK for about 18 months. And I used to write a lot of lists about cats about Harry Potter. I'm not even a fan of Harry Potter. But, um, but believe it or not, we did actually follow a framework in terms of how we tried to create content that had value within the community. And these four things are identity, emotion, information, and aspiration. And the way to see these really is to look at them almost as like themes within content. And also, just to caveat this, this is as much a science as it is an art. I think we really want to emphasize that if there are like content creators out there, you might be thinking of launching a new platform, a new channel. Hopefully this will serve as a sort of like launch pad into how to generate new ideas. But likewise, you probably have like a maybe a big audience already. You're already creating amazing content. Maybe this can serve as a sort of indicator of how to maybe come up with new ideas in the future. So the first one's identity. It's our first pillar. So this is creating content that your audience really identify with. So for me, for example, I've got curly Afro hair. And if I see a photo of someone kind of showing how they create really luscious and moisturized curls, I immediately like that. And I'll probably share it. And also I'll come back to it later and really kind of work out how they make their hair look so amazing. Um, and the interesting thing with identity is the more niche and the more nostalgic the identity is, the more likely you're going to have a closer connection with your audience because it feels more special. So one way we create content that has identity in, with So Vegan is by kind of talking amongst ourselves and thinking, what are the recipes we used to eat when we were kids? What are the recipes that we miss right now? What is, what's going to make me feel nostalgic? So this led us to create vegan popcorn chicken. Has anyone eaten KFC popcorn chicken before, before you were vegan? Yeah, so I've never actually tried it, but I developed this recipe and Ben, ben kind of agreed that I'd hit the nail on the head. Good. So this is made with tofu, it's breaded, we've got herbs and spices in there to make it really delicious. And one interesting thing with this recipe is that we actually called it vegan popcorn chicken, so we use the word chicken, which sometimes we get a little bit of stick for because people are like, it's not chicken, what the hell are you doing? But that kind of, kind of feeds into that nostalgic thing. The word chicken is what you remember. Popcorn chicken is what you used to have. So, um, yeah, we called it vegan popcorn chicken, and it did really well. 
Uh, so the second one is emotion. This is a really interesting one in the sense, it's probably one of the strongest reasons why somebody might want to engage with a piece of content. So the way, easiest way to look at this is to ask yourself, like, how do you feel when you watch a video? How do you feel when you sort of see a photograph on Instagram? And um, it also in the context of food, it's really interesting because food is such a visual medium. It's, it's, it's all about styling the food. It's all about making it look as sort of powerful as possible. And uh, we recently posted our double chocolate brownies yeah. on Instagram about a week ago, which we haven't shared the recipe for yet, which we need to do. Um, and I think in the past, what we might have done is like just stack some brownies, maybe photograph it and just leave it as that. Whereas what we try and do now is we try and re evoke this sense of like comfort, which we find like interesting emotion like within the food. So we'll uh, put some ice cream on top of it, drizzle some caramel all, all over it. And it really kind of like evokes that sense of like, I want to eat it now. Um, so emotion is a really, really interesting sort of theme when it comes to food. And it could be playful instead, it could be fun, um, but it's definitely something to be aware of when you're creating content. Next up is information. So this is creating content that really informs your viewer. Um, ideally, like a really valuable piece of information that they'll, they haven't found anywhere else and they can go to their friends and family and be like, wow, I learned this thing. Um, so it makes them feel really special. Um, hack videos are really good for this. So things like 10 ways to like upholster a chair. Um, also, how-to videos on YouTube are massive. We've got so many friends that have bought houses, renovated, and literally renovated the whole thing using how-to videos on YouTube, like how to tile, how to plaster a wall, all this stuff. Um, so on, with So Vegan, we create how-to food videos. So we created a how to make hummus video. Do anyone here like hummus? <laughs> so we've got a lot of hummus fans. At a vegan event. <laughs> yeah, classic. Um, so we quite often make hummus and probably you guys with like tin chickpeas, really super quick, blend everything together. It's done in like two minutes. But what uh, we don't really see much of is like the traditional way of making hummus with uh, raw chickpeas, boiling them, peeling the skins off and kind of really combining it into a really smooth hummus. So that's what we did. We made a how to make a better than shop bought hummus. And this performed really, really well. So the last one is aspiration. Um, this is quite an interesting one. Again, it's really closely aligned with food, but again, it could apply to anything like fashion, beauty. And the idea here, especially with food, is I think one of the reasons why epic sort of showstopper food performs really, really well is because I think, including myself, I look at these videos, I look at these photos, and I think, wow, like, I want to cook that. I want to like cook it, treat my friends to it, impress them, maybe even challenge myself to like learn and expand my repertoire. And uh, one thing we did recently is we created a giant pumpkin spice cinnamon roll. It's literally huge. Um, it's like bigger than our which heads. Which is massive. It's huge. And uh, I think we posted it for Halloween. And it performed just really, really, really well. Because I think when you watch this video, you think on the surface it's going to be really complicated. The method's going to be really long. It's going to lose, use really sort of uh, strange ingredients. And ultimately, it's just quite a straightforward recipe. The method is relatively easy. And I think you watch this and you think, wow, like, I could do this. I, I could like, recreate this at home. I could do this. And whether it's impress my friends or just do it for myself. So how do we do it is the big question. Um, so literally, this is how we do it. So this is our setup. This is back in, it's actually 2016. But Ben is very bad at dates. And I'm still waiting for my birthday present from a year <laughs> ago. But we'll let that slide today. So back in 2016, we had the setup for filming in our living room. So we'd black out the curtain, we'd black out the windows with a blackout curtain so that we didn't get any natural light in and we'd set up lights and cameras around our dining table. And this was because Ben's brother was living in the second bedroom at the time. And then eventually Ben finally plucked up the courage, courage to ask his brother to leave. So we got the second room back <laughs> and we were like, so we're going to put a studio in there now. So this is our current setup. It's in our second bedroom. Uh, still quite basic. We've created like a kitchen, a fake kitchen area where we film. And I guess the thing to note with both of these uh, images is that the setup is quite basic. So if you're thinking of starting out and creating content, you don't need a lot of equipment. Uh, we've literally just learned as we've gone and bought little bits and pieces as we go, but still we don't have anything that's super expensive. Yeah. I think on this setup, we filmed our homemade energy bars, which is our best performing video on this one. Mm. And it's like second hand camera, two really cheap lights. So yeah, just to emphasize this, it, you really don't need a lot to kind of start sort of getting stuck in and creating content. Uh, oh, so this is the video for the... Hummus, the famous better hummus than video. Bought, how to make better than shop-bought hummus. Yeah, so this got to over a million views on Facebook, a few hundred thousand on Instagram, and yeah, we're going to play it now. <laughs>
Oh, that's brilliant. So that performed really well. The tips that you saw come up in the middle, that kind of really helped with engagement of the video. We've got people commenting and kind of talking about the tips and suggesting other tips as well, which is really good. And this is a really classic example of how pillars can cross over. So we've kind of presented this as an informative piece, but also it's a little bit more technical. The recipe is a little bit, it's not your traditional kind of quick recipe. So you could almost say it's an aspirational piece as well. And when you look at the dipping of the end shots, that's kind of almost emotional as well. It makes me want to eat it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just to quickly um, deep dive into recipe videos as well, because this is what we create a lot of on our channel. Um, I guess there are three things we try to achieve with all of our videos, which is firstly the hero shot. So it's those kind of one to four seconds at the start, which really grabs somebody's attention. So it could be the serving, it could be the dipping of the hummus, or it could be like the stirring of a sauce. And it's just really important to really set that scene in the video and just to catch somebody's attention, just to encourage them to keep watching the video. And then the second one, which is really important, which is the flow. And I think if you look back at our early videos, they go past so quickly. It's just really speedy. And I think what we've really learned um, in the last year or so is to sort of speed up the things that we need to speed up, but then also sort of slow down and punctuate all the really important parts of the method that are really important to show. And this kind of ties into the third one, which is what we've learned recently as well is um, there, are, there might be some parts of a recipe that um, it's just really important to sort of focus on for the method. So it could be something slightly trivial, like chopping a vegetable, but if you have to chop that vegetable in a certain way, that's actually going to really stand out and make that recipe potentially quite original. So um, it's, it's a really important thing to bear in mind when you're creating recipe content. So now we know the technicalities, how do we actually create a video? So first up, we research. So we research a lot. We look at trends, what are people eating at the moment? Also things, what's in the news? So when Greg's created their sausage roll. We actually created our own version of the Greg sausage roll, which uh, might have been better. Oh, <laughs> who knows? Um, then once we decided what we want to create, we start developing the recipe. So we get in the kitchen, we start making the recipe over and over until it's perfect. And then once it's signed off by the both of us, we storyboard the filming of the recipe so we know exactly what each shot is going to be. Then we edit it, it goes into post-production, add a, some text, maybe some fancy stuff, who knows? And then we publish it, and that's when you hit the publish button and it either flies or it flops and then you end up crying all day. <laughs> and yeah, just to emphasize as well that obviously what's key as well is formatting your content, in this case video, to different platforms. So what we find works really well on Facebook is like a one by one sort of square on Facebook and then obviously wide on YouTube and then Instagram are increasingly pushing ITTV. So we do a lot more experimentation around portrait uh, videos, And I think the really important thing to emphasize here for all the content creators out there is just to experiment. So this isn't a one-size-fits-all. It really depends on your style of content, what you're creating, um, uh, to find out what works best for you and then learn from those uh, learnings. So that's the end of our talk. Thank you so much for being here, guys. And just to reiterate, what we've kind of spoken about isn't necessarily just a science, it's an art as well. And I guess ultimately to create great content, you've got to be passionate about what you're creating. So if you're new to starting out, find what you're passionate about, find your identity and your mission, and I'm sure you'll smash it. Thank you.